driving Vanabel down towards the coast and we're heading to Chichester Festival Theatre. I am so excited because I'm about to meet Kate Moss. Yes, and, and Lucy Guy. Oh, yes. Not taxidermist at all. <laughs> this is the loon shower. Oh my god. Oh my god, I have storage envy already. Nuts and things. Sink. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. Well, the bed is there, but obviously the bed we've, is got, there, we've got yeah. the doors open. But, but the first um, row, I feel that's yeah, appropriate. Oh, well, yeah. And it looks gorgeous. Oh, thank you. Because, so <laughs> yeah. I can do breakfast at the Vanabel. How lovely! <laughs> and oh my, my God. daughter's boyfriend, Felix, gave these for us for Christmas. And oh. these happened on Vanabel. Home is where we park it. Oh, that's fantastic. And I have a son called Felix also. Ah, what a great name. It's a great name. Here's those sugar. Yes! Oh, oh no, no, that's Christmas. 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 <laughs> It that's looks like sugar. Cheers, so Vanabel. So lovely to meet you. So lovely. I'm so excited to hear about your project. So let's yeah. start by talking about um, the taxidermist daughter. Of course, you've written so many amazing books, but you've adapted this one, which is going to come yes. back to the chest. Yes, new career at 60s. This, this is what it is. <laughs> Starting a new career at 60s. I was told not so long ago that you were actually an usher here. I was. A I'm, a, as, as we call it down here, a chai girl born and bred, a sesestrian. Right. Yeah. Um, so the very first time I went to the theatre, Theater was this theatre yeah. in 1966 or 7, I can't remember, to see the Italian straw hat. Oh, wow. And I went with my parents and I can really clearly remember one hand, you know, in my mum and one hand with my yeah. dad and walking up the Voms to the main um, auditorium and sitting in a seat and of course my legs didn't reach the ground yeah. and the lights going down and thinking, oh this, this is magic. magic, yeah, magic. This is, so it's incredible honour. Yeah. Um, to, to be opening the 60th anniversary season. It will be the first time that a play by a living woman has opened this the And theater. a local and woman a local. as well. So, wow. so no pressure. So I've, I've been to, told it was described as a gothic thriller set in 1912. Yeah. So just, I mean, I've got the book here. Um, so where did the inspiration for the book come from? Well, two places. Yeah. When I was growing up um, in the 70s, mm. we there was a, a taxidermy museum in mm. Arundel. Yeah, and I think looking back, I didn't realise that they were real creatures that had been stuffed. I think yeah, I thought they were like cuddly ones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, so I, I loved it and I always wanted to kind of revisit what it was actually like. Yeah. So there was that, I'd always wanted to revisit it. Um, I'm a full-time carer mm. and I've been carrying on and off uh, for 12 years now. And first for my dad who, who died in 2011. And towards the end of his life, when he needed a lot more support, my mum needed a lot more support, I couldn't really travel. Mm. And all my historical fiction is inspired by place. But I suddenly realised I could write about home because I could every day walk on the marshes here. And get the inspiration. Get the inspiration. Mm. And little by little, a gothic thriller started to come wow. to mind. And yeah. I'm always intrigued, where do the characters come from? Are they, I mean, it's an obvious question, but are they based on people that you know or do they just come into your head? How do you create those characters? For a character to sing on the page, yeah. for me, they have to be imagined. So, yeah. What I do when I'm writing with both my gothic and ghost stories, like Tax Demma's Daughter and my historical fiction, is it's always place first. And then I kind of stand, it feels like this every time, on my own in the middle of an empty stage thinking, Who's going to come? Hmm. And that's how it works for me. And yeah. so in this book, Connie came, the lead uh, woman came, and I thought, okay, I think I know who you are. I'm going to start writing you and see where the story goes. It's so fascinating. <laughs> I find it intriguing because when I try and compare things to my world, which is sport, and you often hear sports people trying to sort of go into a zone, and you hear Federer saying, and he goes into this golden zone yeah. where yeah. everything slows down for. Uh, him but it speeds up for the opponent but I imagine for you writing do you go into a kind of a subconscious zone where yeah. these characters come yeah exactly it must be very different to adapt a book that you've written that's oh. been so successful yeah. to then oh. into a play that must be a very different skill well I, I talk to a lot of um, friends um, and colleagues in in theatre so my husband is a playwright and teaches playwriting ah, okay. um, my son is an actor I have many friends who are actors and directors. Yeah. I think the thing that I had to learn, really, the biggest thing I had to learn was this, that it's about finding the integrity of the story. Are you pleased with it? Are you? Are I you am happy? now. Yeah. I am now. So you've actually really inspired me. I can't wait to come and see you. Oh, well, bless really you. I can't wait yeah. to come and see you. And the thing that will be so exciting, Annabelle, is that because it's now opening season, mm -hmm. um, people will leave the theatre mm -hmm. and they will be in the, the landscape 
of the, of play, the play because I know. it's set in April. Uh, the head of the creek is here and Blackthorn House which is oh, where yes. Connie lives with yep. her father okay. and he is a ruined man we yep. don't know what's happened we know she lost her memory so she definitely when she was a child Blackthorn. yes so the thing is that you could park however the best place for Vanabel yeah. would be to park at the church oh okay um, and the it, the novel and the play begin in the churchyard right. ah. so this is the churchyard here that's this is the, the church hall and so when I was growing up we would go to church here oh, okay. and the church hall is on the other side of the marshes and we did like they would have done yeah. in 1912 yeah, in the novel yeah. we walked across the fields to church so this is where um the novel begins so and it starts here it starts here and it's in a storm mm. and all the, the men of the village are here so it's mm. it, it's a already sinister atmosphere yeah. and connie my lead character is hiding there because it isn't so oh, but this is Shut. so this is the beginning yeah and you know everybody is standing around in the yeah. graveyard and the rain is pouring and there's no women here because yeah. it's a male tradition yes and you can see how old it is mm. just because of the the shapes of the um uh, the gables and the, the single bell in in that little yeah. bell tower it's you know eerie <laughs> i can hear it <laughs> ringing now it's really hard to see these are marks that have been identified as, you know, pilgrims that got off the ships oh in Portsmouth goodness, on their incredible. way to the shrine of St. Richard's and Chichester. So there's a few more around here. And they carved their signs on. Look at that. Oh, it's different. wonderful, isn't it? Different. So how old would that be? 10th century, 11th century. Oh my goodness, isn't that incredible? I know. I know, it's just so fantastic. This, however, is a bit more modern. Yeah, that's very modern. <laughs> yeah. Victorian guttering. Every weekend we'd be out here, my sisters and I playing. Um, and it's, it's a hugely important natural habitat, as you can imagine, um, with all the reed beds and um, very wildlife. natural wildlife and oyster catchers and all the different types of birds. We, in the old days, this would, I mean, it's very sensible that it's all now blocked off. Mm. But when we were children, we would just, just go head in there. Yeah, we'd just get head lost. straight in, get lost in there. <laughs> And of course, the thing is, particularly when it's really windy and all the reeds rattle together, it sounds like old bones, you know, oh so you can hear it <laughs> sort of jingling. Uh, adventure. Going on an adventure. <laughs> so there, it's, it's always this thing, it's called the Three Bridges. And when we were children, and it was all, you know, less managed, this is where we would swim in the summer, in the creek, when the tide was high. Gosh. Um, because it's not clean enough to swim. Absolutely, yes. I mean, not not to swallow. Yeah. And, in, and, and I guess back then, same as me, um, you were just left, you know, yeah. parents would just let you go yeah, off and absolutely. kids would just play out here. Yeah, they would walk us across the road. Yeah, <laughs> that was the issue. Oh, goodness. So, uh, see a dead body floating, floating. down there. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> it's one like of my it. books. Yeah. And then if we just go to the next bit and then yeah. you'll get the view over on the creek and you'll see... This is unbelievable. Honestly, I've never seen you not? anything no. like this ever. Yeah. And so this is the route. This is what Connie... So they're not that far from the village, but yet they feel completely isolated. And that's really important part of why she's got no one to talk to. And, yeah. you know, she has this. And also taxidermy, even though in those days in 1912, women laid out the dead. Yeah. Taxidermy was a male craft and women weren't oh, supposed to do it. Okay. And so she's doing it because her father is incapable yes. because he drinks too much and there's you know, a secret in the background. And so that's another reason why she's very isolated. Very isolated. No one need, can see what yeah. she's up yeah. to. I mean, women oh, weren't allowed to touch prayer books in church in 1912. Oh, and so when you were thinking about this area for the book, so you just visualised the house there? Yes. That was... I just knew that's where it would be. Yeah, it just was Yeah, was what was in your head. Oh, so can this. you see across there, yeah. there's a, an amazing clutch of bulrushes, yeah. which is just quite extraordinary. And were they always there? They've always been there. And that's one of the oldest, that's Queen Anne House, you can tell from the kind of red brick. So the yeah. description of Blackthorn House, I've used that. Ah, oh, okay, um, so it's more like that style. It's more like that be sitting there where Absolutely. that tree is. And then we're going to go a little bit further just so you can see the church. Yeah. Because we'll, we can see it from this side. Mm -hmm. And Appledram, where all the terrible things happen, is kind of straight across okay. there. Those Appledram woods, that's Delkey Sailing Club. And then you can go round and you could just see um, Spire of Chichester Cathedral. I don't know if you can just see that sticking oh, up. Oh yes, there. yeah, yeah. Oh, well spotted. You're yeah, right. that's pretty good. <laughs> I know it's there. That's the truth. Okay. So, um, can you see the spire? It's just up above the green there. 
tiny little spire. And then there's that's the old sea wall. Um, you mm. can kind of see the buttresses that that are out, and that was built after the the years of the big flood. So in the novel it, it, and the play, the climax is the flood. Oh, I cannot wait to see this play. <laughs> I really can't. <laughs> and really very best of luck with Thank you. I can't wait to come and see it. Let me know when you're here, yeah. and we, we will, will definitely. Yeah. Yeah. We will come and have another coffee. We'll have a come and have another coffee. Well, cheers. Well, cheers. <laughs>